back to our next video tutorial for Amazon S3 storage. In this video, I'm pretty excited to tell you about a new feature of Amazon S3 that you can see on the screen that is object lock. This might uh, not be a feature which you will find on AWS certification exam, but yet it is very important feature when you need storage for regulatory and compliance purposes. So let's start and look into this very interesting and new feature. We will first see what is Amazon S3 object log and then we will see its different features. And then I would follow it up by a configuration of object logs in your AWS management console. So your what is object log basically? So object log is a feature by which you can prevent overwriting or deletion of objects for various use cases, including your regular regulatory and compliance issues. So you can avoid this deletion or overwritten for a fixed amount of a time or indefinitely. You can use Amazon S3 object log to meet regulatory requirements that require warm storage. And what is warm storage? That is write once and read many. So if, if any of your projects, if any of your purposes requires warm storage because of a certain uh, regulatory or compliant ins uh, compliance instructions then and then you can utilize amazon s3 uh, object lock and you can also use it to add an extra layer of protection against your object changes and deletion now let's see what are the features of amazon s3 object lock the first one is retention modes it has got different retention modes and i would be talking about more briefly about all these features in the lit, uh, later slides so let's quickly look at the features first so we have uh, one feature that is called retention modes then we have retention periods then it has legal holes bucket configuration and required permission so these are the features which uh, uh, together make your object lock in a workable position now what are the retention modes so there are two different retention modes in uh, S3 object log. One of them is governance mode. In governance mode, users cannot override or delete your object version or cannot alter its log unless they have a special permission. Now, what is that special permission? That is your S3 bypass governance retention permission. And the request to change must include X dash AMZ dash bypass dash governance retention colon true as a request header to override your governance mode and your Amazon S3 console by default has that uh, XAMZ bypass governance retention is uh, true when you browse your or when you use S3 console to access your S3 storage. So if you uh, raise a request uh, to change the governance log through S3 console and if you have one of this permission that request would be successful. Then we have another mode called compliance mode. In this mode if the uh, the project the protected version object cannot be overwritten or deleted by any user when i say any user that includes your root user as well in compliance mode retention mode cannot be changed retention period cannot be shortened so this is a difference in governance mode you can change or alter in compliance mode you cannot change the mode or you cannot alter the period or you cannot shorten the period now let's see what are the retention periods we have so first of all, what is retention period? So this is something which protects your object for a fixed amount of time. You can explicitly specify retention periods or you can put it through a bucket default settings. If you put up explicit retention period, you specify a retain until date for the object version. And your retain until date is stored in S3 as an object's metadata and it protects the object until the retention period expires. While when you use a bucket default settings to provide that retention, you will not use retain until date. Instead, you specify a duration, one month, two month, three days, one day or years for which object needs to be protected. Your explicit retention mode and period override your bucket default settings. I would like you to have a look at the those retention period and retention uh, retain until date so this is when when you specify through bucket default settings you will get retention period where you can specify days or years and if this is when you explicitly pro, uh, set up your object lock on a particular object in that case you would require 
or you will get a retain until date if you put up a retain until date then the date or timestamp would be stored as a uh, metadata of the object and accordingly the lock would be applied now what is a legal hold so your legal holds they are independent from retention periods and like a retention period a legal hold will prevent your overwritten or overwriting or deletion of your object so it's an additional uh, safeguard basically and but this legal hold does not have a retention period and it remains in effect until removed the moment you switch it on it remains on and then you come and switch it off it remains off so that's how it is it does not have a retention period or retain until date then legal holds who can place legal holds or who can remove them any user who has s3 put object legal hold permission so these are the couple of points regarding your legal hold now how do you enable ob object lock so first of all to use amazon s3 object lock you must enable it for your bucket and you need to specify it while creating a new bucket you cannot specify object lock for an existing bucket and if you need that kind of a facility you need to contact aws support on to enable your object lock on an existing bucket and when you create a bucket with amazon s3 object lock enabled uh, make uh, make a note that versioning will also be enabled in that case and once you create a bucket with amazon s3 object lock you cannot disable object lock or suspend versioning for the bucket so let's jump into the Amazon S3 console and see how we can configure our object lock. So this is my management console. Let me go to S3. So these are my S3 buckets. As I said, we cannot do it for a existing bucket. If we go here, this is my existing bucket. You'll go into the properties. And if I go and say object lock, it says object lock can only be enabled when a bucket is created. So I cannot do it. If I need to get it done for my existing bucket, I need to contact AWS support. So let's go back and quickly create a new bucket for this demonstration. So let's create a bucket. Let me give a name. The cloud bureau dash lock. Hopefully this is available. Next. As I said, we need to enable this setting while creating the bucket. So we cannot immediately create the bucket. So we have to go through all those options. So first of all, if this is a versioning, a versioning option, and if I go here in advanced setting, you'll find object log. But this is not enabled yet. If I click on it, I cannot click on it. So I need to go back and enable the versioning because versioning is the first condition to enable your object log. So this is my versioning enabled here. Now if I scroll down and see, now it allow me to set up the object lock. I'll select this object lock. I'll go and click next. Uh, will not make, oh, let's make it public. I want to uh, put some objects into it and go next. So this is asking me to review the options. It's okay, let's create a bucket quickly. The bucket has been created. Let me go and check. So this is the bucket we just created. So let's open it, go to the properties and then object lock, click here because the lock has already been enabled. Now only we need to provide the retention modes. So these are the two retention modes, governance mode as well as the compliance mode and governance mode can only be disabled by AWS account that have that specific IAM permissions and your compliance mode again I'm reiterating that cannot be disabled by any user including root account so if I click any one of these you'll see the retention period there is no retain until date it's a retention period so let me see I'll change it I'll put it save so my it says confirm I'll confirm it so the object lock retention mode has been enabled now if I it has been enabled on the bucket itself if I go and put up a object into it, let me put up an object, add files, let me do this uh, logo itself, it's done, next, 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 and upload, 
so it is should shouldn't be available here so it says uh, one success zero error it should be visible yes there let me open the properties of this one properties now see this is an explicit object log the one which we enabled in the previous uh, screen that was for the bucket default settings and this for specific to the objects if i come here <coughs> i can put up a different enable log or uh, governance mode maybe compliance in the bucket we opted for governance mode here we can opt for compliance mode if you want i'll stay with the governance mode you can retain it until the date this is the date uh, where you retain till retain it and it would be stored as a timestamp with the objects metadata in s3 and here is the legal hold legal hold comes in addition to your retention mode now let's give an example if you have a retain until date of for till uh, maybe one month and your legal hold still stays enable even i'm after one month when you retain until date or retention period expires you cannot override or delete the object so that would in that way your legal hold would provide an additional layer of security or safe safeguard to your file or your to your object if your legal hold expires before your uh, retention period or retain until date still your object cannot be overwritten or deleted till the time you finish or your object finishes the retention date or, or retain until date or retention period so that's how you do it i'm not gonna do it uh, this is uh, was only for the demonstration purpose so guys that was a very quick one uh, for your object lock uh, this is uh, something which you will not find in exam but definitely it's very uh, worth topic for learning in your day-to-day -day life in your environment so thanks for watching guys and if you like the video please share and subscribe